I tried to be a nice guy. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, you guys remember this thing? A very good ukulele to use. Please buy. I'm very broke. I tried to throw this guy a bone. I bought it at the end of this episode, thinking, ha ha ha, that'd be funny. Buy it, unbox, it's a feel-good story. We start Trey Tuesday Season 4, everybody's happy. But no, Mr. Prabhu3179 here just ghosts me. Even when I try to give him free money, just nothing. He never sends me my ukulele, never messages me. So I'm sorry, guys, we will not get to unbox a very good Stitch ukulele to use. Oh well, we'll try for season four another time. But until then, let's look at some cool guitars I found. All right, starting things off on eBay this time. The place I always seem to have such fantastic luck at. We have what is described as a 7475 Gibson Flying V restored with like some customizations. Okay, so we got some Lonnie Mac style in here. We've got the Flying V with a Bigsby B7. Such a cool look. I love the bar and how they attach it to the sides of the body since they don't have anything to attach it to here like you normally have on say this Les Paul that you're seeing on the screen. But what's even more interesting is the fact that it appears to have been a Vibramate unit. So you could actually remove that and just have the holes right here on the guitar and convert it back to stop bar tailpiece. So if you love everything else about this, but not that, that's an option for somebody. They're saying this beast used to look like this. Oh man, I don't have to tell you guys again how much I love 70s flying Vs. There's a reason why these things are skyrocketed in price. When I first got into them, they were like 25 to 4,000. Now they're like six to 10,000. But how does one start to look like this? Well, apparently they put a flame maple top on this one and added binding. We're kind of getting some Dean vibes here. But perhaps the most striking thing is that in doing that, they've completely changed it. Let's look over here. We used to have a, a pick guard on this thing. But now we don't. So that means they probably had to route away some of the body before they put this maple top on it. It's either that or this thing is extra thick. However, judging by the side profile shot though, I don't think it is because the neck is still sticking above like it's supposed to. So they had to have routed away some of the mahogany and then put this maple top on there. It's either that or it's just a maple veneer and not actually a real top and they're just covering over the rest of it. I guess the only way to know for certain is if we took this back plate off that they custom routed into this guitar because normally, once again, these are top routed instruments covered over by a pick guard. So if we looked back there, we could definitely see how thick that top was. Or if it's just a thin veneer. That would actually be really exciting. We could also tell that by taking these pickups off. So no more pick guard. We've got kind of almost 80s style right here, the way that they did the flying Vs in the alder body days. And an output jack located here. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go 58 style down here with like a jack plate or something. But I think this guy was trying to get rid of any type of plastics on this thing except for the rings. So that's enough to catch your attention, right? But then you see the full body shot and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So this is the photo I was looking for. Yes, I totally agree this is the 70s Flying V. It's got that very nice dark mahogany color. Now they might have taken the black coloring off the headstock. Sometimes they would ship like that, but not all the time. And I'm guessing if they had to refinish this, the odds of them refinishing everything are pretty high. But that mix match of really dark mahogany with this lighter colored maple, it's not quite as appealing to me, but look at our fretboard. Normally, flying Vs of this era, they get the boring dots. Now, sure, there is the very small run of the block inlay ones, which is where the 70s tribute ones come from, yet today in the Gibson lineup. But ebony fretboard with trapezoid inlays? That's fancy. Kind of reminds me of the custom shop flying V standards we had talked about in this episode. They've got the cool flame tops like this, but without the age. Besides this, it looks good. It looks the way it's supposed to. Giant volute and all. And I love the fact that even after all that has been done to this thing, <laughs> new fretboard, new top, all that refinishing and whatnot, it still has the original double ring, double line, clues and tuners. Those are usually the first thing to go. So let's see if the seller has a story for us. Comes in the original case in very good working condition. All right, that's worth some money on its own. It's got some wear. They had to modify the case for the Bigsby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was expecting they would have to cut off like a huge section right there, but it almost looks like they just lightly shaved it down. They're saying it's in good shape. It looks like our pickups are non-original. They're USA made voodoo pickups, but unfortunately no story. Come on, something like this needs a good story, but the shop probably doesn't even know. So do I think this is an authentic Gibson Flying V from the mid 70s? 
I'll at least say I'm pretty confident in the neck. And the body wood looks pretty good too, because you could make the argument somebody just gave this thing a new body. However, I'm definitely leaning more towards that's probably just a mod job, like a serious mod job, but I'm definitely thinking that's a thinner veneer than a top. But I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. But hey, speaking of cool flying Vs, look what I found this morning. There it is, guys. The run I left out in this video because I didn't know about it. So the first Flying V Customs came out in 2002 and then ran into 2003. Apparently, there were 40 of these things made. So very few. But if you're wanting to collect that original run, these things don't show up too often. So when I saw this thing come up, it's like, oh yeah. So why would you want this run versus a modern day one? The modern day Flying V Customs, they look very similar to this, except for they're not quite that expensive. <laughs> but when the Flying V Custom was first reintroduced, those guys had the rich light fretboards. So this one being a 2002, you can definitely see it's got the true ebony. So maybe not that different from current day production, but very different from the whole 2018 through 2020 spec'd out ones. And kind of just the collectability factor that you have the first run of something that is very experimental on Gibson's part. And early 2000s, great time for Gibson. Love everything that was coming out around that time. Custom Shop, USA, all that stuff was nice. And this one even has the COA. People lose those big paper things all the time. And this is before they went to those nice booklets that actually fit in your case. <laughs> Unlike these things, unless you want to fold them up. But if you're interested in this one, it's listed by Thunder Road Guitars. I mean, they're asking a premium. However, I think they probably can get something close to that because of the rarity. And apparently it's supposed to be in good condition. And I'm wondering if the uh, neck profiles are different on these earlier ones, because that's a big, chunky 50s neck. So if we're talking R7, R8 type neck, that would be an interesting beast. Next up, one from Thunder Road Guitars, listed at a little under $5,000, or a little over, depending on shipping. We have a 1972 Deluxe that has been given the Triple Deluxe treatment. You can check out this old Rock or Not episode. Gibson once did a Class 5 Triple Deluxe in Orange Crush, which I thought reminded me of like you're trying to order something at a fast food joint. But no, this time we have it on a 1972. This thing's got some vibes. It's been used. It's got some of the greening going on, so that's nice, although the wear pattern is strangely rigid but i like the fact that they went all out and it appears they put gold hardware on this thing abr1 bridge and stop bar tailpiece but imagine that with gold mini humbuckers come to think of it i can't think of any stock gibson guitars from the 70s that had gold mini humbuckers so maybe that's why they didn't do it but we still have our thumb bleeders on our golden knobs and the headstock does not appear to be in too bad of shape from this photo we've got our original tuners on there once again that's half the battle we're two for two in this episode love the look of those vintage ones but then you see it. Ah, no. No. It's got some weird stuff going on here, but there's your headstock break. On a three-piece mahogany neck even. Went through all the pieces. All right. And then the back. Surprisingly in pretty good shape as compared to everything else. But we do have the pancake body. Looks like our output jack has also been replaced as well as the jack plate. I mean, this is just like some sort of a road dog. No, it didn't ship with the mini humbucker, but it is an error correct one according to the description that somebody had professionally routed in. So normally, when you think of routed deluxe, you think mini humbucker to humbucker conversion not add a third one to the mix that, that's cool triple mini hummers don't get used too often however the price tag seems a, a little bit extreme for a headstock repair routed out example but you gotta remember the early 70s like 1970 1971 1972 they have a completely different market as compared to 73 and onward Jumping up a year, we've got a 73 Les Paul Custom offered by Olivia's Vintage. When I saw this, I got really excited. I was hoping it was another blasphemous seven-piece top. Because <laughs> there was one that had like a whole bunch of flame figuring. I probably can't find that photo again. Oh wait, never mind. I found it. Look at this thing. Maybe not as cool as I remember it, but you can find some crazy guitars here in the Norland era that just have so many pieces to the top that makes them hilarious. But what got me excited about this one is we've got some extreme figuring. You know, something like this, it might not be for everybody, but for me, Cherry Sunburst is a boring color, so I'd rather have some sort of a fun story to tell behind it, right? <laughs> I bet that thing looks fantastic in person, especially that piece. And thankfully this time it's not the one that gets hidden by your hand, I mean a little bit. But yeah, this is one of those weird Norlin era oddities. 
but appears to be in pretty good shape. The lacquer hasn't aged too much on the headstock. We've got our early 70s specs, where I'm not as big of a fan of them because the nut widths are a little bit smaller. They've got these really skinny necks. The frets are absolutely tiny on these things, but you can tell this one has been refretted, so that's been cured. I much prefer the maple neck era, where the frets are at least a little bit bigger than they were, and you get a more traditional neck profile to them. Still thin profiles, but no longer as skinny. But generally, the early 70s Les Pauls sell for more because they have the mahogany necks instead of the maple. But then you also have to put up with things like pancake bodies. So what a cool freak of an example here. Nice find, Olivia's Vintage. And they're asking 6500 I could see myself paying that much for the right freak top that has all of the right wood grains. But how's this for some additional story? First off, I'm flabbergasted. It came stock with Grover tuners. That was probably custom ordered. The volute is abnormally large for this era. Like, that reminds me of late 70s Kalamazoo build ones. That's cool. It almost even looks like a one piece mahogany neck, but you can see it right there. I'd still believe it's three. It just blends in really well. But anyways, to our story, the back has been engraved by presumably the original owner. That's always cool when you see stuff like that. They may or may not be famous, but they left their mark on their guitar. And the last one to share with you guys tonight is my favorite color of the 70s. Well, at least of the rare cool Les Paul customs. It's the tuxedo. So the tuxedo refers to this thing. It's got a white top, the white binding, and then a black back and sides. There's a guy in Dokken who was very famous for using one of these. They did not make many of these. Like we're talking maybe around 50 or so. I've seen them range from about 1974 to about 1977-ish. But some of the cooler ones are the actual 20th anniversaries. A friend of the show just recently purchased one of these, but then when this one showed up, it's like, oh cool, so there is more than one. But Epiphone not too long ago actually did a run of white tops like this as a tribute to these original ones. Ones. But then unfortunately, this one had a headstock break. And I'll always regret selling my old one. It might not have been in the best of condition, and I think I needed to restore the pickups or something if I remember correctly. But those things have gone up in price lately, because this one snapped headstock with later 80s Gibson Lifton style reissue case for some reason. They want 6,500 bucks. But this thing will take a very, very, very unique buyer because you have to find somebody who appreciates the rare color nature of this and is willing to pay collector prices for an ultra player's grade model. I would question, is that even the original finish? Or did somebody spray over the back to maybe try to hide this repair at one point in time? And if you zoom in here, you can see a brass nut. That was a big thing to do in the late 70s, early 80s. So that likely happened at the exact same time at the headstock repair. So I'm not even sure if a blacklight would help you verify if this is original. However, this color combination did exist on this particular guitar. So we at least have that going for it. But anyways, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all these cool things with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.